Rodeo time. Got to get her on down the road. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Rodeo Time, the podcast. We are all the way here in Winnebago, Texas, and um, yeah, we're talking rodeo, we're talking bull riding, we're talking all the things. Today's podcast brought to you by none other than Ken. Sorry. Well, I didn't mean to do that right in the middle of that Can Am mention. BRP um, Feed Buggy Corporate. Thank you, Can Am, bringing us this this podcast. We've got Mr. Derek Kobaba, Chase Outlaw, along with the man DB, Donnie Ray Daytona, and Leroy. So, um, do I need to be wearing the? Only if you want to feel official. Yeah, yeah, you well, really. I mean, yeah, we're gonna and be you can't. That and you can hear yourself. You, you can be able to tell if the mic's picking up or not. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Outlaws having fun. How much fun? Happier in a gopher and fresh dirt. Happier in a gopher and fresh dirt. That's it. Yep, that's the one. So uh, you guys came here from uh, home, I guess. Kobaba flew in from Washington. Mm-hmm. When was, when was the last event? Last event we had for the PBR was in... Uh, that's a great question. Fort You've been, Worth. At, uh, Fort Worth, yeah. You've yeah, been we at home to, for a while. No, we went to Fort Worth and then flew home, came back to Fort Worth at the semifinals. The American <coughs> flew back home, and then we just wanted to come see you. Yeah, yeah, just had so, to come uh, hang out. Had to come back to Texas. Yeah, we're shooting some of uh, some some videos at uh, Radiator Ranch for Can Am. So you didn't want to drive your RV in like Outlaw? No, no, I figured I'd probably better better off just catch one of them birds. What is that? Twenty two hours? Uh, shoot, the last time I drove down here was about uh, closer to. 30. Gosh dang. Yeah, it was a long drive. <laughs> so I figured I'd just leave the old steed at home and catch one of them planes. And, uh, Save her legs. Yeah, 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 absolutely. What you got? How far How far of a uh, drive was it for you from Hamburg, Arkansas? Seven hours. Have you ever met Scotty Pippen? Isn't he from there? You know, I was is. watching The Last Dance the other day and I thought of that. I'm like, you know... Yeah. You Outlaw and Scotty probably hang out. No, you don't. I don't see him around our hometown. Like you don't ever. Really, you don't ever see him. Like, yeah. Does he live there or something? No, he don't even live there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did you know he was from there? Yeah. Y'all, y'all like talk about it? No. Nope. Almost Scotty Pippen. Uh, him, and my, him, and my dad graduated together. So. No kidding. Yeah. That's cool. So he knew him. He said. Uh, they was in football practice when they was in high school. He said they lined up. They was like ninth grade. And uh, he said that Scotty looked at him and said, Don't hit me hard, outlaw. Don't hit me hard. <laughs> <laughs> so he knew he wanted to play uh, basketball, I guess, at the time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. yeah. Uh, dang. But now it's home of Chase Outlaw. Chase Outlaw. Yeah, yeah. Not, not, no longer home of Scotty Pippen. Yeah, those days are over, Scotty. I'm sorry, but it's home of the bull riding king of of Hamburg, Arkansas. There's a lot of people from over there. I met uh, a lady makes wild rags. Uh, Miss uh, Betty. Yeah, every time I see her at, at, at exhibit shows, all she wants to talk about is you. Yeah, she uh, like she sent you know me. I tell you, matter of fact, when I was a little kid riding sheep, she would always dress up as like the rodeo clowns at the chuck wagon races and. Uh, she would always be like the rodeo cams at the rodeo when I was riding sheep. Dang. So she's known me for a long time. Yeah. Dang. So it's been bull riding since day one? It's Miss Becky. That's her name. Yeah. I was about to say, Betty didn't sound familiar, yeah. but I wasn't going to Betty her. was the old woman that sold tat. <laughs> Betty and Carl was the old man that sold tat. <laughs> there was a Betty. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Becky Switzer is yeah. the um, wild rag woman. Yeah, got you. Yeah, you got a bunch of like, you you've already set, told me a couple of names, like you were like, what'd you say earlier, like uh, Daryl Daryl Wayne or something. You're like, oh Daryl Wayne got bit, but like I should know who it was. <laughs> he got bit by that mule, tore the, <laughs> tore the back of his back off with that mule. What name did you say? What was his name? Um, Shoot, you said it like yeah, I spent the night with him last night <laughs> <laughs> earlier. <laughs> I know it's his brother Shane. I, you David. Know. David. <laughs> yeah, David. Yeah. And good on the lineage. His brother Shane 
after this. <laughs> yeah, David. Yeah, <laughs> uh, so, anyways, sheep at what age? About four. What is that, four years old? And it's just been bull riding ever since? Or did you ever stray off do something else? Uh, you know, coming up, I did a little shoot dogging and a little junior rodeo. I did shoot dogging. And um, uh, actually, when I was in the, the junior high, you know, the Wrangler Junior High Division. Yep. Uh, I went to the very first one in Gallup in 06. And then in 07 and 08, I was actually in the Ribbon Open. And 08, we, I made it a short round in the Ribbon Open at the Wrangler Junior High Finals. But I wasn't the roper. I was a runner. Okay. Yeah. I had this roper, uh, Whitney DeSalvo, that she actually won the junior high final. She could stick it on him, and I'd have the fl calf flanked, and she'd touch it, and I'd tear out. So I did venture out and time so, to be in just I was a runner. What you're saying is, had there been ribbon roping on into, like, PRCA or something... <laughs> we could have gone places. That you Me, might we, not have proceeded in the bull ride. You might be, like, a professional ribbon roper right now. <laughs> that might be something that they should add in at the American. Hey, I mean, Ribbon roping. <laughs> they're adding... Every year they're adding something. So, ribbon roping. Would you break back out? I believe me and me and old DeSalvo would. <laughs> <laughs> you were such a dynamic duo back then. Why not just, you know, for old time's sake? Yeah, and uh, I rode a few bareback courses. Uh, made it to the high school finals in the bareback riding, um, but didn't go in the bareback riding. Yeah. Qualified. That's all I need to know for myself. I qualified. That's good enough. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Send me the I seen the man killers that was there the year before, so um, <laughs> and then I got on a few saddle bronc courses. Uh, yeah, man. you seem like a guy that could spur a saddle bronc course. It was fun. That was I wish I'd have, I wish I'd got on more. The one I got a couple I got on with a saddle that fit. It felt great. It was awesome. Then I got on some more. Another barn. Another guy's just using what I had, and it was way too big and. First thing hit was my forehead. <laughs> yeah, you gotta have the right time rig in, uh, in the saddle bronc. It is, it is. I, like I, I'm not gonna be honest with you, Dale. That's something I could see myself. Like it was really when it when it everything fit, it felt good. Like yeah. I, that was one thing that I was like, man. It, you watch them r the rights, and I was like, man, that's sort of. To me, it's like that's that's how that felt. Like, <laughs> that's what I looked like. And it, and it felt good. That's what I. Yeah. So yeah, like that was, that was fun. I, I wish I could do that again sometime. Uh, get yeah. on saddle bronc course with the right setup and everything. Over. Well, you're only 28. Yeah. Do you have a Do you have a target age of when you want to retire from bull riding? I don't want to be riding these. I don't want to have to be riding them when I'm 36 years old. Okay. Know? Well. Billy E. went to the NFR, what was he, 44? 42. 45? I don't like riding bulls. I know, but I'm yeah. saying you could stop riding bulls at 36, get back on Bronx for like six more years. Dude, that's a game plan. Unless they bring back ribbon roping. Then, of course, you <laughs> Unless they bring back ribbon roping, then I'm going to, yeah. Yeah. Then it, then you're home free. But you got plan B. I don't know how fast I will be when I'm 36 yeah. on my straight yard sprint, especially in a killed up arena oh oh because of ribbon roping sorry yeah, i was thinking yeah. bronc ride <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah um yeah uh donnie's going through that deal right now with uh the saddle he had a saddle that didn't fit and i was we, swimming in it it's yeah huge. we we just got him in one that does fit which one were you would you ride in first you were talking about your swimming in 16 three quarter yeah. was it the, the g bar g of mine uh -huh. yeah. yeah yeah and then we got him in one of jacobs crawley's saddles and it, it, it sure enough fits it was like 16? Oh, no, it was 15 in there. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, this is the second saddle I have of Jacob's. The first one, the skirts were pretty. Yeah, pretty yeah, janky. Yeah, yeah west. They, were, they were pinching on the, my, my leathers. Jacob saw it right away. He's like, nope, that's unacceptable. Yeah, <laughs> but you had already been on like 20 bronx. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, whoops. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> what about you? It's always been bull riding, huh? Cobalt? Yeah, I guess. Uh, shoot, growing up, that's all I wanted to be. Mom probably thought I, they should go a different route, maybe pick up that rope. <clears throat> and, uh, no, I mean, heck, my dad rode bulls, and so it was just kind of like, yeah, that's that's what I'm going to be. And uh, When did you get on your first one? First bull, I was, I think I was uh, 12 years old when the first full-size bull. And, yeah. uh, you know, like everybody, it's it's a full-size bull, but he's going to jump kick across the pin. And, 
he had the big horns and uh, everything to go with it. And so my little heart was just pumping. I'm like, oh shit. Yeah. Guys, now's my time. It's either I got it or I don't. And, had you been uh, on like calves or steers? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, we got on steers and calves and I, junior bulls and yeah. Uh, so kind of going up the ladder, I mean, now is the time to see where we were. And, uh, yeah, no, I, I will never forget that. I got off and I'm just shaking. And, yeah. uh, you know, what, what felt like a, a snap of the finger, it was, you know, four or five seconds out there. And, uh, yeah, I guess from then on, it's just been go, go, go. And uh, I never did enter the ribbon roping, but um, <laughs> <laughs> besides the point. And, uh, you know, I think... We went a, a couple years junior rodeo and trying to rope and, and do all the, all that. And uh, I think my mom decided, well, you know what? That's a little too expensive for us to be just right. pulling a horse trailer around when really yeah. all the only thing you want to do is pull that damn gear bag back there. So that's yep. what we what we did. And uh, but if you watching uh, watching rodeo or, or or whatever, if you if you're not riding bulls, what what would you have wanted to have done? You know, I think there ain't nothing more exciting to watch than a solid bareback ride. I mean, really? you watch Casey lean back, and I mean, hoe it out of one. Uh, yeah, it's and like then what ninety something? Yeah, you watch that, and you're like, man, that looks awesome. Yeah, you just rear back, and it's everything you've got just to stay in the middle of it. And then you watch him again on something that maybe doesn't go that good, and just gets wrecked out I'm like, well maybe i don't want to do that that's the best guy in the world right there doing it and he's walking away holding something so right but no i always thought the bear background was pretty i got on a few bears uh for a couple years i really enjoyed the hoppers yeah, uh, yeah i went to nice. longview and sammy andrews had a he had a, a hopper named shady lady and I, that was the horse that made me feel like a bareback rider. And then the next year, I was like, well, I better enter Longview in the bareback riding just because, like, I got to get Shady Lady again. <laughs> and uh, I drew a horse called Cool Water. <laughs> <laughs> you, are you familiar? No, but I, are you familiar? I imagine it probably wasn't like Shady Lady. It was not like Shady Lady. <laughs> like, if you ask any bareback rider ever, really, they know Cool Water is one of the top five eliminators that ever, has ever, you ever. know, gone through a buck and shoot. And uh, Jacobs Massive slapped him out. Horse. And Jacobs, he came to me after. He's like, man, I think you need to be done with it. I, I, thought, <laughs> I thought you were going to die. Like, I, was, I thought you might not live through this. <laughs> this is it. And, but anyways, you say that. Like, the hoppers are great, and they look great, and they feel great. And then the eliminators look, they feel like they look yep. like eliminators. But, yeah, that's what I figured. So I figured I'd just stick with the bull riding and go that go that avenue. Um, and besides them horses, man, that's a long way to fall. God, yeah. them man. some big song guns. It's a long way to fall. Little exactly. red, red shade yeah. hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We should write a song. <laughs> yeah. Especially uh, speaking of like horses and dangerous, I am about sick and tired of people either asking me. Or messaging me when they're from Arkansas, man, you need to come to these wagon races over here. <laughs> what the heck do y'all have going over there that everybody and their dog wants me to come to? I mean, what is that? Um, what are they called? The National Championship Chuck Wagon Races. Okay. And it's at uh, Dan Oaks Ranch at the Bar OF Ranch in Clinton, Arkansas. And it's the largest equine event in the world. I mean, um, yeah. There's over 6,000 head of horses and mules that, that come through the gate throughout the week. and um, It's a lot of Coggins tests. <laughs> <laughs> no, but they, they may not check that. Coggins. Do they check Coggins? Oh, yeah, hot and Okay, heavy. it's official. Yes, yeah, okay. sir. Yeah, um, hot and heavy. <laughs> um, but it's just a wild race. Um, Do they buck my horses, dad, too? Yes, sir. They buck horses out in the middle of the field. They got pre for buck and shoot set up out in the middle, middle of the field, and... They buck in the middle of the ring, out in the middle of the field, and Bob Brown fanning, and you just need to pull up videos on YouTube and yeah. watch it. And um, y'all ever been? My to... dad, uh, my dad describes it as it's a, it's a cowboy Woodstock. Okay, <laughs> I've seen pictures. It looks. Wild. Have y'all ever been to Pinoca Stampede? They yes, have sir. PBRs up there. Yes, sir. I've have you to... seen to those wagon races? Yes, sir. Are uh, they? Do they? Are they comparable? No, because I mean. 
yeah, they're running big fast, big thoroughbreds, but you just need to watch, watch it and then say because the outrider, and we're out in the middle of the field. Yeah. And our outriders got to be in front of our wagon. The ones in Canada, they they don't have to pass their wagon because it's too dangerous. What's the point of an outrider anyway? Keep that, them horses going the right way. Yeah, and uh, um, sorry. Well, because no, that's that's true. And, and and back then they had a back back in the day when you had a like the Oklahoma land rush when they staked out and staked claim for land, and you usually had a crew that had a wagon. You know, you had your you had your your town folk that had the wagon with mules, and then you had so you had that usually had a horse, and he would try to get farther. You know, and just whatever would make They'd it catch up. Yeah, and um, that's basically what, what it is there. We I don't know the rules and the regulations, stipulations, and the background and the founding of it up in Canada, but I know up there in Canada they do have some that I mean way better. At, finer and a lot more like expensive thoroughbreds than what we're running down there in Arkansas out in the pasture. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I, mean I, I think they got a lot more, a lot more cheddar in them thoroughbreds up there, but also, I mean, you see what they're running, I mean, it's a different class you got right here. You country boy yeah. deal to, I mean, doing it for people who don't say I think so it's Just terrible. A I say you got your city. I mean, deals, and then you got your. Obviously, you're a cowboy, and you've heard of this, and you. I mean, it's off in the backwoods now. Yeah. I mean, this yeah. is. Oh, 40, 40 50,000 people be at this on. Gosh, I mean. dang. Yes, sir. Dang. It's wild looking. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. Like, it's, uh, it's something. something like that in Washington? I've been I, all over the world. I can't say that we have that in Washington, the wagon races. No. Yeah, I got that one rodeo though. It's the what's the Indian race? The Indian race. Run down that the hill. Omac. Omac yeah, Stampede, man. That is side race. Omac, not yeah. Ogden. Yeah, no. Omac is pretty <laughs> different pretty state, buddy. <laughs> I knew it was an O. I knew it was an O. Yeah, Omac. You were on. You were yeah. on. Yeah. Uh, with an O. We used to have a high school rodeo there, and uh, you know, you look at it from the arena, and I mean, yeah, it's steep, and they hit the water, and they got across it. But when you go up to the top of that hill and look down it, I mean, it's all the vertical, now a foot of sand, and they got a lineup of probably oh a hundred yards off the top of that hill, and that's where they send them. And Dang. they say that when they go, they're probably jumping about ten feet before that cliff drops, and then they'll just coast them down and into the water they hit. Golly! Oh. Dang! I, but that that's like on a reservation, so they can't like regulate it or something like that. I mean, there's no rules. I mean, yeah, <laughs> right? it is on a reservation. It's all because like mean, people die, right? You definitely could. I mean, yeah. it's it's not just you're going down the hillside. We'll just kind of pull him back a little bit. It's yeah, there ain't no like it's a dead sprint, it's and then you're off, and it's probably oh a hundred yards of vertical down into the river. You hit the river, and the river is probably fifty yards that you got to cross. Dang! And, How uh, far is the whole track? Oh, I mean, it's it's a short run race, okay. but it's like they have a deal that similar to that at Clinton it's called the Snow Man, Snow River Race. They start them way up over here. It's one point one mile. The whole the track is, and they start them up here on up here on top of a hill. You got mount. You got to get off your horse and you mount it. Come down this sun gun, up this sun gun, and I mean straight down this sun gun. And then you hit the track and you run across the track. And then you hit your you hit the creek and you gotta swim your horse down the creek, come up out of the creek, and then around the big track. Yep. It's uh it's like a Hidalgo race, oh, like yeah. uh, the whoever's horse has got the biggest heart and that's very exciting and Oof. man. Well, you want, you need to pull ride. up your phone, that, that <laughs> thing you got in your hand every day, and you need to pull up them YouTube videos and watch it. And you'll you'll go ahead and make your plan and have your trailer hooked up and <laughs> yeah, no, me and Boone go out there. Yeah, I guarantee you. <laughs> me and Boone go out there. Boone's got a big heart, but he ain't got the age. Well, I ain't talking about racing and competing. I'm talking about just going and spectating and seeing it and being part of it. Cause that man, saying like I work for him. I saying that it's I've been all over the world and I've seen some crazy things. Being a bull rider and doing, but the craziest thing and the wildest cowboy and craziest thing I've ever seen in my life. Has happened on that ranch. Yeah, 
I believe it. I believe it. So, speaking of crazy things, one thing I like to ask is like the, the craziest prank you guys may have seen somebody pull on another bull rider like on the road. On the Anything road. specific you guys can remember like any sort of prank that was pulled? I mean, like, oh. <clears throat> I feel like every rig has changed the clock while someone was asleep. Like, you're late. Or like, hey, <laughs> it's, your, it's your turn to drive, you know, or... Yeah, yeah, I tried that on me. Yeah. We got it on Amy Cannon. Yeah. <laughs> he went to sleep. <laughs> changed the clock. It's your turn to drive. Man, I didn't feel like I, I slept at all, man. <laughs> Golly. <laughs> you know, I can't really say to too many pranks that you see on the road, or at least probably what we should speak of, but... I remember one time, it wasn't even much of a prank, it was just a screw you at the finals in 2015, and J.W. Harris, Stetson Lawrence, they just kind of, I mean, they traveled together, or stayed together, they just kind of had that little friendship back and forth, and uh, J.W. kept losing his, losing his feet, he lost his feet on like the first three bulls, so Stetson, being the nice guy he is, he just went off and sank his JW Spurs in this can of rosin. Like real nasty, gooey rosin. I mean, took his rouse and just buried it in there. He said, hey, I'm trying to help you not lose your feet. And oh, uh, wow. <laughs> So how JW thought to get uh, Stetson back was he'll take that rosin and wad it up in Stetson's helmet. Let all that <laughs> long, <laughs> pretty long hair Get a little extra stick on it when he go, and sure enough, Stetson stayed on his bull and went to rip his helmet off, and I mean, about half his old wig come off with it. <laughs> it, was, it was far from uh, just a friendly joke, but yeah, it was. God, that's when I knew I'm glad JW is still not there. But <laughs> uh, Stetson did something, man. You mentioned it. Stetson got me one time with a fake snake. That was me. Yeah. <laughs> <That was me. laughs> yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. It was you. Yeah. Gosh dang it, that's right, I gotta get you back. I forgot, I gotta get you, you back. You remember I killed that snake at Deadwood and uh -huh. put it in... Killed, but he killed that snake out beside the parking lot. Killed that snake in, out there and I can't remember whose gear bag we put in. I thought I, maybe I put that in Stetson's gear bag. That real snake. <laughs> because I thought he tried getting me. And maybe you're just now fast enough. I thought yeah, it was him. worked out that Stetson, way. Stetson, yeah. all this while, be like, man, Outlaw's got it out for me. <laughs> this whole time, it's been Kobaba. Uh, I'm glad we could get a sort of that. Yeah, sorry about that. That was that. me. <laughs> oh. So, you, uh,. Being in, in Washington, I mean, like most of these events, that's what, I mean, you're just flying by yourself, huh? You're yeah, really no, it's, with anybody. Yeah. it's pretty much all your traveling is just in the airport. And, yeah. You know, which is kind of like the, the give and take part that we talk about when, you know, why don't you rodeo or why do you go to the, the PBRs, things like that. And I mean, rodeo is a lot of fun. You know, I've, I rodeoed a little bit and, and got a lot of uh, good buddies at rodeo and <laughs> I mean, that kind of brings everybody together. I mean, you're jumping in the truck and, and driving thousands of miles and, and those all-night drives and little pranks that you pull. But uh, for me, it's it's usually kind of wake up on a Friday, go catch a flight, ride a couple bulls, come back home. And and uh, for me right now, I mean, that's, that's kind of the way that I wanted to pursue it and uh, to, to kind of have that home life a little bit and... Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's the airports, they get a little little old pretty fast. You think there'll be a time when you do go back to rodeo? I don't think I'll, I don't know. I don't think I'll probably ever be able to go back just full time. Um, yeah. I mean, in the PBR, it's it's kind of all or nothing. I mean, you're you're putting it all on the line every you, single week. You get on a lot of bulls. Well, you know, I had this conversation this last week. I mean, it's, you know, we may only go to one one spot for a week or weekend but hell even on a three-day event with a 15 15 i mean you're getting on five bulls in three days and yeah uh the chances are i mean those those five bulls were probably pretty good <laughs> yeah yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah one of them's not probably yeah there's not like three of them that are a day off yeah and so i mean it just i mean you look at it however you want to but um you know 
to say you're going to have a, a real long career going that route, probably not. But, uh, I mean, at the other hand, I guess it depends on what you want to do. Yeah, but, what you want to get accomplished in the career. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah would you say that we were in Vegas at one time, the St. Jude County Fair, Podunk, <laughs> This what I can't remember how you worded it. Remember we were doing that video? Yeah. Yeah. The Century <clears throat> Podunk County Fair pumpkin pulling or something like that. <laughs> pumpkin rolling or Yeah. Yeah. What about you? How do you feel about rodeos? Man, just exactly what Derek said. Um I've been to a couple of them, not near as many as Derek, but it's nice because I went straight to the PBR when I um, turned 18 I really didn't go to much rodeos so, but when I did here the past couple of years and the the years that I went to one or two or three rodeos during that year you know it was so nice just to be able to catch up with all of, all your buddies like your bareback riding buddies saddle bronc and the steer wrestlers just guys you don't see being at them PBRs every weekend and so that's that's what was real nice is just been able to see all your buddies from, you know, from back in the high school that you had hung out with in high school and whatnot. One thing we get, one thing we get um, a lot of questions, a lot of questions of um, how to get started bull riding, how to get started rodeoing, and how to get started ranching. So let's imagine you're talking to... <clears throat> Unless you want lots of heartache and cries and tears... Don't start either. <laughs> <laughs> but let's let's act like we're talking to like somebody you know under let's say twenty four. You're twenty four, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What you got to say to somebody? How I get started riding bulls? Well, uh, I mean, one thing that I stress a lot is uh, first, obviously, figuring out if if you have anywhere close to you to go get on some. I mean. The only way that you learn is, is by doing, unfortunately. And, uh, you know, there's there's a, a lot of basics that, that you can cover on the barrel and things like that. But um, at the end of the day, you know, you've got to get on a lot of stock. So being able to find that avenue, and, and it's, it's probably not going to be the easiest for somebody that, that lives in downtown L.A. And, and he's wanting to be a bull rider. Um, but... On the other hand, I, I, I talked to some kids, I'm like, hey man, you've got one of the tools that not everybody had back in the day of YouTube. Like, right. Figure out who you like to watch ride bulls and what that style is that, that you enjoy seeing and try to mimic it. Mm -hmm. I mean, instead of, you know, step, spending all your time on the phone doing something that's probably not going to benefit you anything, you know, focus on your film and, and uh, just trying to get better, but... At the same time, um, you know, I, I would say that it's it's all comes down to practice makes perfect. You got to have that repetition. I mean, the moment that it becomes a, a reaction is the moment that you're gonna finally slow some things down. But it's gonna be a lot of bulls and a pretty long road before you get to that point. But and the next hardest thing is is finding somewhere where somebody has the stock for you to learn on. Not everybody, that's few and far in between nowadays is somebody have a stock that kids and stuff can come learn on because everybody's raising bucking bulls. Everybody that's got something, I mean. Trying to haul them something. Yeah, they're not raising something to, they're raising something to be something great. <clears throat> like So that's, that's the next thing we're running into is people having, bulls at the practice pen for these kids to for them to learn on and whatnot because yeah. usually you go to somebody that owns bucking bulls that has something where a place to buck you're more than likely gonna get on a bucking little son of a bitch so. yeah like it's some some juice yeah so yeah. you really it's hard for a kid that's been on five or five stairs or something to try to learn on that that's that's one thing that i'm seeing on the kids around where where we're from and whatnot, like you, you can't. Yeah, I mean, it's it's tough because like you get you get around some guys that are, or some older guys, and after you've been on ten, fifteen, twenty, it's like they they want to you know like they start getting on the ranker stuff, and all of a sudden they get you know they get their egg cracked, 
a few times and now all of a sudden they're going backwards mm -hmm. you know just because they're going too hard in the paint you know yeah i mean there's just not that you're not really building anything when you just hammer a guy into the dirt 10 times every time he gets on one but i mean i see both sides of it obviously it's expensive to to feed to some bitches so why keep any of the, the bad ones around but at the same time i mean What's the point of breeding these ranked bucking bulls if you ain't gonna have no bull riders to get on them? Yeah. Um, so I, like Chase said, I mean, there's that <laughs> fine line of finding somebody that, you know, is gonna be able to help you and then put you on the right stock to where, hey, I, you know, I felt really good about that. I learned something. I felt good on those first three jumps and not just get dusted every yeah. every time you you nod your head. I mean, there's there's not really much to learn from that, but. Uh -oh. It's hard to find a 5.11 nowadays. Yeah, <laughs> something that'll ding, do ding. Yeah, put, a, put a quarter in it. Yeah. Like, Cowboy churches. Yeah, like you whoop a dog every time you walk in his pen. You know, so eventually that son, when he sees you coming, he's just going to go ahead and run away yeah. and try to get away from you. Right. Uh, eventually that's where it's just like you, these young kids getting on these bulls, you power slam them in the ground five, six, seven times, and that's their... Eighth and ninth and tenth one to get on. Yep. I mean, you, they're gonna, they're whoa. They, it might whoop it out of them, and right. really, they, and they really might have had what it took. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Because, but they were getting on their tenth little junior bull, and that song, and you could have marked him a forty-seven. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, powder got wet for the ready to take a shot. Yeah. So one thing, uh, <laughs> I guess, Donnie having been on what you think forty head of, of Bronx. Round about, yeah, getting close. And then anybody out there listening that that's rodeoed, you know, I personally have never bucked off. But if uh, <laughs> if you <laughs> if you <clears throat> you guys among the elite bull riders, you know, in the country in the world right now, talk to us about coming back. I mean, like, let's say you got the momentum, you're on a hot streak, but you're 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 at one of those weekends where you got five to get on that weekend, but uh, you have a buck off. Maybe it's a hard one, maybe not. But like, how do you come back mentally to the next bull? Because the the next bull has no idea, you know, that you just oh, yeah. bucked out. It's not like he's gonna take it easy on you. So what do you where do you go mentally to recover? You know, I think that's where like when we talk <laughs> about bull riding and how it's kind of you know elevates. Um, all those levels of, of mental toughness, it's like, it's something you're doing day in and day out. You go get throttled the first day, what are you going to do to come back and, and you can either sit back in the locker room and say, well, shoot, yesterday didn't go very good, so this whole weekend's ruined. Or, you, you know, I mean, you got to come back with a hell of a, of a mental game to be able to say, you know what, learn from that, this is what I did wrong, push that behind me, figure out what's going to work on this next one and then just I mean at the end of the day they talk bull riding is 90% mental but yet we don't really do a very good job of like practicing our mental game you know I mean and it's something that you got to teach at a young age and, and uh, you know for me anyway it's just just believing in yourself really yeah and I'm sure outlaw would probably be the same to that because hell when outlaws in the locker room and you might have a bad day I think uh, he believes in you more than half the time you believe in yourself. So uh, it, it just helps build everything, and that's it. All comes back to to how you think about yourself and who you surround yourself with. But um, what you think, Outlaw? Man, it's pretty much right on the money. That's um, yeah. You can either you get throttled the first day, and you can either <clears throat> sit around and pout about it, thinking the whole weekend's done, or you can have the mentality to come out and say I'm. I'm gonna win the round today, and I'm gonna come in with that good pick in that short round. In the learning phase, let's say you've been on 20 bulls, and you buck off, and you're gonna come back. Let's say it's a Tuesday buck out. You buck off Tuesday night, and you're gonna come back the next Tuesday to get on your 21st bull. Is there any what What do you suggest a guy do the, for those seven days to get ready? Like, is there, is there, like, things you guys would do during that time or even today, like, between, like, you got a week? Yeah, you stay wait. tight. You got to train and you got to be focused, like, riding your barrel. Uh, Feel like you're prepared for, yeah. you learned from what happened, and so you went home and, and you just got to prepare. Correct. I mean, whether that's, 
And and so many guys are different. I mean, some guys are, you know, to them being prepared is going and, and staying in the gym for two hours every single day. If they did that through the week, they feel like they're confident, they're prepared, they put the work in during the week. And, uh, you know, for a, somebody starting out, I mean, it it's all comes down to making it a reaction. I mean, once you get it to that point of, hey, my body knows what to do, I just got to let it do it. And trust it. Trust in yourself to let your body do it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I mean, it's... It's an easy thing that is easily, uh, you know, um, what's the word I'm talking about? It's, 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 it's an easy thing that's easily overcomplicated. And, uh, you know, I think that goes from the very bottom level to the very top. I mean, you see it, guys, best, best guys in the world, next thing you know, they fall off 10 straight. And you're like, well, that just doesn't make any sense. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I mean, I've dealt with it. I think everybody's dealt with it, but, um, breaking it down and all coming back to the basics of, hey, you know, push your fundamentals through your brain, do whatever it takes for you to feel that you put the work in for the week and uh, and show up and let it all hang out. So we had last week on here, we had kind of a, um, he's my neighbor, got a ranch next to me and uh, entrepreneur, not a rancher, he's just got a place. And he'll tell you that. I grew up on a dairy farm. But um, businessman. So we were talking about just a lot of the similarities between being a businessman, entrepreneur, and being a rodeo cowboy, bull rider, just full-time cowboy. What do you guys think about like money management and, and that sort of thing? Like Maybe you're talking to that same guy, and he's going down the road of being a rodeo cowboy. Like, is there... Is there a way that you manage your money that you win with riding bulls? Is it like an outside source of money you bring in also? How do you guys I'm gonna say ninety eight percent of bull riders are piss poor money managers. Ninety eight percent. Maybe ninety nine is piss poor at money management. Yeah. What do you feel like Because when you're an eighteen year old kid and you win a forty thousand dollar check at eighteen years old? And you get it direct deposited in your bank account. <laughs> and, I mean, you just, I mean, honestly, you think, man, this is, and you do it the next weekend. You never have a poor day. Yeah, you think, yeah, I'm never going to be poor again in my life. And, well, but you know, that shit comes, easy come, easy go. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> that is, um, that's one thing I would, would have to say about bull riders. And seeing a lot of the greats that were great. And seeing them struggle today, that's what, well, I tell you what, that really motivated the hell out of me. Yeah. What are yeah. some of the things you've done that, that, like, you feel like are wise that, that, like, you've done different than that scenario? That I would have done different? Or, or that you are doing different right now? Like, is there something you're doing with your money different that, that, oh, just, um, that's, that's smarter than, than that 18, that same 18 year old move? Yeah, was? yeah, just, I mean, like more you, maturity and just yeah, just being smarter. Yeah, yeah. Like Dad said, do smart things or shit. I can't remember that. <laughs> do smart things. What's your What's your key? What right now? What do you think? I know you got a place. Yeah, yeah, I got. I mean, you got real estate. I mean, I see a lot of guys like they're just you know out there because I, I I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I see some of that same thing and. And you'll see somebody <laughs> win uh, a lot of money and they just buy a new truck with it or buy a new, you know, something with it that's not going to, you know, be there when they're done rodeoing. But mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm just curious. That was what, there. That, that's exactly what I'm talking about. And, and maybe some other guys maybe going out partying and buying everybody at the bar <laughs> shots and yeah. buying all your buddy shots. Yeah. yeah that's fun to do maybe once or have somebody do, but you know you can't you can't be going to do that. You go through your money so so quick. Yeah. Well, you talk about businessman like your neighbor. He feels he's a businessman. Well, at the same time, I mean, bull riding's fun and that's just good old cowboy shit. But at the same time, I mean, it's your business. Yeah. Yep. And uh, you know, and I don't think everybody. You know, I was lucky enough at a younger age to say, hey, either if this is what you want, you have the opportunity to do it, but. This ain't gonna be here forever. I mean, a long yeah. career is ten years in bull riding, and yeah. uh, so trying to set set myself up to be able to have something 
when that's all said and done. And that also kind of pursued the reason why I went with the PBR is just because that money is, is available each and every weekend to be won. And, uh, you know, that's, I mean, that's kind of the dream, you know, you retire from bull riding and, and have something to show for it. And, uh, whether it's, you know, a, a ranch that you're working, trying to build on or, or, uh, a herd of cows or, or whatever it may be. Um, it's just like I said, it's, it's make your money work for you instead of just going out and buying a new truck or, yeah. you know, everybody yeah. has shot at the, the bar, but <laughs> yeah. this guy had a business, he had like 30 rent houses, oh, man. he had 50 at one time, but anyway, what do you think, Donnie? I was going to say something earlier. I was going to ask him, I was like, uh, how important do you think it is to like surround yourself with like the right people when you're coming up and like start like you don't want to be surrounding yourself with guys that are just trying to get an Instagram picture and stuff like well, that. Like, <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. I mean that was like I said when you're when you're lucky at a young age to to uh, be told these things. And mm -hmm. I remember uh, John Grounding, one of the, one of the great stock stock contractors. Uh, he told me at a young age. He said. Uh, you're only as good as the, the people that you travel with yeah. and, uh, and you know which some might hurt a couple people's feelings but also I mean losers travel with losers and winners travel with winners and I think that's I mean as cut dry black and white as you can can think because like I talked about you might have a bad day and, and you might be feeling kind of down on yourself and if you got some guy next to you say, well hell shit God couldn't have rode to some bitch let's just go to the bar well, yeah. It's probably not going to benefit you very good as much being in the guy that says, hey, you're good, you're a rank son of a gun, and, and tomorrow's a new We're gonna day. We're going to win that son yeah. bitch, so let's yeah. go to the bar and let's, uh, <laughs> let's have some cold beer, and we're going to go get them son of a gun tomorrow. Yeah. still yeah. go to the bar. Yeah, yeah. yeah the bar. Besides the bar, but... No, no, I mean, not it's, not go to the bar. It's, it's definitely huge, though, to, to surround yourself with people that, that bring you up and, and people that just make it fun. I mean, But they want to win. Like, yeah, yeah, they mm -hmm. want to win, and, and you guys both have the same goals. I mean, yeah. it's like when we show up to the rodeo, we're here to freaking win. We want people around here to be like, wow, shoot, they showed up. We're riding yeah, for yeah. second or yeah. third. That's exactly and and right. that's, that's the feeling, and, and that's something that just it grows. Yeah. I mean... When when you jump out of the truck and you know people are saying that you're like oh shit that's that's Where when you know win? you're showing up and there's no doubt in your mind that you're winning yeah it don't matter yeah. I mean it's, you have dinosaur in there it don't yeah. matter you're winning yeah. you notice a big difference in like amateurs and professionals I feel like there's there's a lot of behind the shoots where guys will um, and and they're trying to be your friend and you know you said that like it might hurt their feelings there's guys out there where you know it would hurt their feelings to say this but like. There's these little subtle things that people will say and act like where you can tell there's a difference between um, uh, <clears throat> an amateur and a professional. And, you know, an amateur would just be like, he'll make excuses for you. Oh, yeah. that bull did this or this or, you know, yeah. man, I don't know. Like, just shake that. He was rank, you know. Like, And then you got the professionals like, man, you shouldn't get out over him. You know, you just sat down on that bull. You just looked out. You know, like, like there, there's like... It's not that they're trying to down you, but there's a level of accountability. Yeah, when you take you know, responsibility, you take for your, responsibility yeah, for like it. it. Then it's on you. If it's exactly. on you. Then you can change it. If well, it's absolutely. Up, if it if it's the animal's fault, the stock contractor's fault every time, then there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, you don't want. I mean, because I mean, at the point of you know, you can't say we're supposed to ride every single bull if oh shoot, he kind of dropped in the back end there. Oh heck, he kind of gate guy, he screwed you. I mean, it's you can make excuses. All day long. All day long. Yeah. But but at the end of the day, I mean, you've got to be able to, to move forward and, and learn from it. That's what I always try to tell myself and, and other people. I mean, something didn't go right there, so I need to figure out what I did wrong, learn from it, forget about it, and, and, and carry on. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just one of those things when people talk about, like, what's what aggravates you the most or makes you, you know, kind of makes you tick, and it's, you know, excuses I mean, yeah gee whiz. hold yourself accountable you're the only one that has the opportunity to, to, to ride that bull it's up to you you got to do whatever he does you got to be able to match it yeah and uh but yep that's not what kind of everybody wants to hear sometimes <laughs> yeah but to answer your question donnie yeah it is about yeah like who you go with it's um 
Hey, you, you gotta, yeah, fucking, you don't sit, like, you know, it's all over Instagram, Facebook, whatever, you see all these pictures and memes, whatever, but it is true, you don't, you don't see a wolf, or you don't see a sheep sleeping in the wolf's den, yeah. you know, or, you know, so. Yeah, iron sharpens iron. Yeah. If you're ironing and you're in the truck with some lead, it ain't gonna help you none. Or aluminum. Yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> You got any thoughts, any questions, Leroy? Uh, man, what's out of all the PBRs, like not necessarily the PBR itself, but like the town? What's the, like, the what's events? The, yeah, out of the events, like in the town, like what's the one every year besides the finals that's like, man, that's. When that one comes around, I'm so I'm pumped to go to that one. Which which ones, which one sticks out in your head that you're most excited to go to? Uh, Bismarck, Deadwood, Big Sky. Yeah, I mean for me, it's it's kind of both on like just the PBR itself and the atmosphere. Actually, I take all that back. <laughs> the Calgary Stampede. That's yeah, that's a good one. Yes, sir. That's a great one. That's um. That, that's. Spectacular. I mean, just. What about a, a, a Cheyenne? Well, yeah, it's Cheyenne's good. pretty good one too. It's just it's good. I mean, for me yeah. personally, I like Pendleton. When when that one comes around, I mean, obviously it's a little closer to home, but uh, that's that's probably my favorite favorite bull riding of the year. I mean, that's yeah. Kind of get everybody in one spot and. Don't talk about some wild races. Yeah, they, they have some, some wild, wild ones. Races. Those yeah. those Indian girls. Oh in yeah, there. that relay. Oh, hey. <laughs> <clears throat> they is that where they jump off the horse and it? Oh yeah. yeah. Gosh, they it ain't woeing up on nothing. They, they don't just woe. Pale off. They don't woe. It's, they are wild. Yeah, I'm looking forward to getting to that one. It's a good. One. Yeah, I and then that's the other. Thing. No, I just like want to get up there and see it. <laughs> yeah, no, sure. yeah. I mean, you're sitting on the grass watching watching the guys ride the, ride Bronx and stuff. It's just yeah. I don't know. It, you, there's nothing else like it. Yeah. That that one's that one's different. That, yeah. I, I, out of, well, out of bulls from the past, if there was one bull from before you were in the PBR that you would you could have had an opportunity to get on, what bull would it be? You know, that's a good question because there's some awesome bulls that you watch. I've been watching recently on they've been a bunch of somebody's been posting a bunch of old videos. Uh, was Bushwhacker already out before you came in? Uh, he was about the first year that I was around. That was kind of his his last uh, last go. I never did get a chance at him, but yeah, yeah, it didn't last too long. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got on him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. You had been you what been you'd been on tour th four years or something? Came on two thousand twelve. Yeah. Anyways, but he was a ham. I mean, that, that was a that's a real bull. Yeah. But to answer your question, um, I like locomotive breath. That was a cool little muley. Oh yeah, Babyface. Babyface was good too. We were talking about Margie Time the other day. Oh, Promise yeah. Land. You know, Margie Time. Margie Time looks like he'd feel pretty good. Oh man. Yeah, lots of timing. It's just amazing just to see what it's all kind of <clears throat> grown into, though. It's like. Does the, Bruiser feel pretty good? Yeah. Yeah. He looks when like. When you're he, in the right spot, I was say, it looks like man. Nice, dude. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's that's an outstanding buck and bull. But I, I always tell people, I mean, that's the one that you just know. Like, I mean, he knows what's going on. Yeah. I mean, the first Smart. time. Yeah, I remember getting on him. I'm just looking at him, watching him. I'm like, I don't know if he's asleep or <laughs> what he's doing there. His lips. Yeah, he's just sitting there twiddling his ears. I'm like, what the hell? And, I mean, he knows. When that gate latch pops, we're six feet in the air. And, I mean, it's game on. How many times have you been on him? Uh, I think I've been on him five times now. How many times have you rode him? I've rode him three times. Nice. So it's, uh, yeah, and that's an, I mean, I, and uh, the other story, she went, Lockwood got him, knocked him out cold. And I swear to God, it seemed like it was everything that bull could do to not, not step, step on, on him. I mean, he was jumping six feet in the air, and every time it just looked like he was placing his foot right next to him. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, it's just an amazing animal that's, yeah. Obviously, I mean, it just kind of feeds into that, uh, what everybody says, oh, they just must be the meanest, craziest right. animals in the world. I'm like, well, yeah. shoot, HD was washing them like a dog in the yeah, back. Yeah. 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 And yeah. so that's, that's your, that's your champion. But yeah. Bush, Bushwhacker was kind of like that too. Yeah. Not they, as friendly, I don't think, but like. They said they, you'd scratch on him yeah. anyway. They said that, um, 
cord that he was in the pen. Um, what's that? Um, that primer he's got. Yeah, riding solo. Riding solo. Right. Said he was in the pen, scratching on him, rubbing yeah. on him. Yeah, no, he put the halt. He puts the halter on his bull in the back pen, and then you get him in the chute, and he is liable to flip upside down. Yeah, I mean, like, he's yeah, you just, tell me that. I don't, I don't know. That motor's running hot. Yeah, what you mad about? Nothing. Did you forget the pressure cord? Yeah, I mean, I got the audio on those, but <laughs> I forget to hit, the, hit record on those, so we can take that off. Anything you said. <laughs> <laughs> so anything you said hadn't been recorded on this. It's recorded on those. Oh. Gotcha. <laughs> but the the because I started it, I thought y'all were coming in. Oh, so <laughs> and and so I stopped it. I was like, well, let's wait. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, it's my these, fault. These mics are really good though. Yeah. It'll yeah. Pick well, yeah. they're okay. <laughs> they're I forgot. I thought we was live there for a second. Like, we'll be able to mess yeah. up. We're not live. Pick it up. Well, I mean, it's recording. We're still recording. I okay. just got to use that audio. It, them relay races, I was saying. We keep going, but it's getting hot in here. So let's. Uh, we'd like to end it with some uh, life advice. You got some life advice for us? Life advice. Some motto you go by? Motto, you. I mean, uh, like we were just finished up talking about. Uh, Hold, hold yourself accountable. There ain't nothing worse than trying to point the finger because at the end of the day, you're the only one that can do anything about it. I like it. Yeah, that, that yeah, that's true. What you got, outlaw? Send him home with a good one. I don't know. Just <laughs> try to be a better person than you was the day before and um, really just you just got to keep on keeping on because life, I mean, <clears throat> life is, is crazy and uh, you have to maintain that. You, you, if you want to succeed and be a bull rider, um, just knowing this because I've been going through it with the injury, you have to, you need to, you have to maintain and it's hard to maintain that, that wolf mentality and that lion mentality, you know, being at home and not not being seeing the other guys in the locker room so that's something that's been real hard and um just having to really focus on and tell myself you know and be that wolf you be it yeah. for yourself because yeah. you know you don't have your other guys buddies there to feed off of and so that's one thing that i've been having to do for myself is just really just stay sharp yeah stay sharp on your own and Really, just got to improvise, adapt, and overcome on whatever life throws at you every day because it's, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, always give 100% unless you're donating blood. <laughs> I'm Dale Brisby. We're on to the next one. Pow, pow. You bet. Oh, I'm mad at yourself while you're right now. He's pretty mad at himself. Yeah, or you job. were at first second. I don't know if you are.